Hello again. This is the seventh video that uh, I've, uh, I'm making, and this one is also to do with the IME theory. Um, after making the video last night, I went to bed and slept and woke up and I remembered some of the things that I used to think about the theory, the extension of the theory. But, um, Oh, well, this isn't so much to do with the extension of the theory. Uh, it might be. I'm not sure. Uh, still, there still might be new, new psychoanalytic theory. Um, but firstly, I'll outline the IME. The I is knowledge, and the me is experience. The I and me are constantly interacting with one another. The me passes sensory information to the I, and the I regulates the behaviour of the me by using knowledge of how to react in any given situation. That's memory um, and recall, and cognitive things uh, that, that the mind does to assess how to react in any given situation. If you think of any situation you've ever been in and think about how you reacted to that situation you realize that um, the reaction firstly comes from the mind before it comes from the experience and that which you experience is that which is the me um, of George Herbert theory is the body not, the, uh, not so much the brain but more the senses and speaking seeing hearing smelling touching those are the senses, those are the me. And the I stands, is a permanent part of the self, is the mind and the brain that holds all knowledge, uh, memory of knowledge, memory of past experiences. It's all knowledge that is in the I. And then the I oversees the me in the experience world. The, the objective world of the I oversees the subjective world of the me and tells it how to behave and the me comes back with information for the I the I, the, I, the knowledge, the memory uh, assess how to react in the situation and then pass information to the me to the body, to the experience to, of how to react in the situation uh, this is this is thinking some thoughts that I've had using the IME theory about um, schizophrenia and mental health. I thought that uh, in psychosis, the me, the body, the sensor, the sensory part of the person is confused. And so the eye builds up a content of confused and misinterpreted information until a climax is reached and breakdown occurs so what what we have going on is the with the hallucinations video uh, visual and audio hallucinations the me that is the sensory part of the body and brain the me is taking in confused information. But to start with, when when mentally ill people aren't diagnosed and they don't realize they've got a problem, um, they don't realize that their me, their sensory perception, is somehow confused in some way. Um, that it's not normal, it's not what they're used to. They're hearing voices, they're seeing people walking around, seeing things happening, seeing delusional, seeing illusions or delusional things. And the eye is gathering all this information from the me of these delusional or this misinter misinterpretation of the me that is going on with the me. And it passes all the information to the eye, and the eye stores it as knowledge. And the delusions, the, the confused 
sensory perceptions uh, continue to pass information all day long, as long as the person is awake, not sleeping, all day long from from moment of getting up, the person is having sensory information passed to their mind, to the eye, and it's confused. So the eye is gathering the, this information, believing that it's knowledge, without question, and slowly the delusion builds up and up and up and up and up and up and up until it bursts out. Until the breakdown occurs and the person can't any longer interact properly with normal life or normal people. Excuse me. The me passes confused sensory information to the eye. The eye stores up this information continuously, collecting these delusional experiences until they build a form of thought delusion, a delusional ideology. That's that's pretty much the same as I just explained. That um, people suffer from mental health over time, they come up with ideas that they're being followed, that the television is talking to them, that somebody's planted something in their head or in their arm or whatever, and they're tracking them. And all these sorts of delusions, that they may be the angel Michael, or they might be an angel, or they might be God, or they might be the devil, or uh, these delusions, the, these delusions that come from a period of time where the sensory perception was confused, or blocked, or impeded, or something, um, and the knowledge, and the I stored up this delusional knowledge so that um, they have a fictional basis because the, the information coming in is, is deluded they have a fictional basis of knowledge to, to react from I can't think of an example right now but I'll go on is the me damaged impeded or blocked in some way or is it open to extrasensory information? Is the me in a more primal state of being? These are two questions I posed. And I'll read them again. The first question is, is the me damaged, impeded or blocked in some way? Or is it open to extrasensory information? Is the me in a more primal state of being? It was just questions that um, follows that not necessarily follows but um they that there's something external or internal causing the me to be delusional to be confused i'll go on and this is where we hit religion with me now religion has been a big part of my mental illness and I believed I was the angel, an angel, I believed I was, it might have been the angel Michael. <coughs> For some years that went on until I started to realise that I was uh, confused in some way that and people were telling me that I was ill and this was sinking in slowly and um, I came back to the IME theory and I thought this I used to think that mental illness was the devil taking the person away from God, away from nature. I thought that the devil was deluding or overwhelming the mind, the sensory perceptions, in this case the me, to remove me from contact with God by creating, by causing these blockages or damages or impeding me somehow on my sensory level. I say overwhelming, as people with mental illness, like me, sometimes experience fast thought. This is when the person cannot control the thoughts they are having. It's mentioned in one of the videos that, um, that, that their minds are racing, I can't remember which one said it, but one of the videos I viewed on YouTube said, he said that his mind was racing sometimes and he couldn't control it. He's getting all these thoughts going on in his head and uh, they're all kind of thick and fast. And some of them might be true and some of them might be false. 
and you can't tell. Or, well, he didn't say that, but that's that's what it is for me sometimes. <coughs> I can't tell what, what thoughts to trust and what thoughts not to trust. And this is where I thought that um, the devil was taking me away from my contact with nature, my contact with the people that I knew, contact with people I didn't know, contact with new situations, new new surroundings, new experiences. So, uh, so I didn't. I thought that nature and people and uh, experience, empirical, no, experience, um, yeah, I thought that the devil would take me away from God. I'll talk more about that another time, in another video. Um, but I think that's a, that I used to think that that was how the devil was working. Working in sensory perceptions. Working in extrasensory perceptions. I uh, still see and could see back then energy moving around me all the time. Little patterns appear in front of my face and um, move the air moving all the time. I can still see it now. It's, it's like a static. It takes shape some, sometimes. I see the static all the time. It's like a stat like when you put the television on, or when you used to put the television on when it was analog, and uh, you just get a blank screen of static because there's no channel tuned in. It's like that all the time around me. And sometimes it moves and it takes a shape and pattern or something, or shows me a picture or something. And I thought that that was the devil confusing my senses. So that I became delusional in the eye. The devil was confusing in me. And in the eye I was, I was becoming, or had become delusional. Because I'd built up these ideologies over time. Based on my sensory experience. Of sight, sound. Mainly sight and sound. And this is what I want to finish, finish this video off with. In the psychotic person namely me, or somebody else with uh, schizophrenia or mental illness. The me, the, the experienced self, is damaged, blocked or impeded upon. So that slowly over time the I is no longer a pillar of knowledge. The I becomes a pillar of fiction. That is that because that, that is what a delusion is. It's a fictional belief. Although it's not, a, it's not a belief. Uh, all psychiatrists and psychologists and everything, they think that the person is believing that they're God or believing that they've seen the angels wings or seen the devil or that they are the devil or that they are an angel. And it's, 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 <clears throat> it's not a question of belief that the mentally ill person must battle is a question of empirical certainty that he or she must confront. It's that they are certain about these delusions, and they are certain about these delusions, like me, because it's what, what I experience. It's what we experience. We experienced things like no other. Mentally ill people have experiences that known people just don't have. And is that that builds up to an empirical certainty that they know the truth about something and nobody else will listen to them. It's not belief, it's certainty. So this has been the seventh video and I'll be talking about the I me theory and delusions and God and the devil and I'll touch on those probably again in another video. But uh, this is the seventh video, and this is the end of the seventh video. I hope you understand what I'm trying to get over to you. And good luck.